Hello and welcome! If you watch my channel regularly, you probably noticed that I prefer to tinker with PC hardware with the ISO bus. I get sometimes ridiculous complaints in the comments that the hardware is too old and useless, but I prefer it for many reasons. Not only nostalgic ones, but mostly because it is less integrated and gives a much better platform to learn and understand how computers work. As many of you know, I am a software engineer, but I was interested in electronics and so I started this channel to learn about it and share my experience with you. But as I said, since I am usually more interested in hardware with and for the ISA bus, I often grab such hardware first from the pile, leaving a lot from PCI, AGP and newer generation hardware for later. And so, from time to time, the pile of untested newer in quotes, hardware gets quite big, and I have to work myself through it, testing, sorting and if needed trying to repair. I usually don't show it in my videos, because most of it just works, and the whole test procedure is not too spectacular. But today I would like to show a little bit how I test the hardware, because it could be a bigger topic in one of my upcoming videos. As an example, I will take this Creative Sound Blaster Live 5.1 PCI sound card. I owned the predecessor of this card back in the days, and it was really good. I still like it a lot, not only does it look cool, as I think, it also has quite awesome features, which were very impressive back in the days. The predecessor, Life, without 5.1 card, was the first PCI sound card developed by Creative after taking over the famous Ansonic company. It introduced a new sound processor for it, EMU10K1, which was a beast with almost as many transistors as a Pentium CPU. It provided 48 kHz 24-bit bidirectional audio, dynamic wavetables, various MIDI standards emulation, 3D audio with EAX, dynamic audio effects which were able to simulate various acoustic environment and so on. And the same EMU10K1 chip was then used on the next revision of the card, the Live 5.1, which I have here. I tested this card a long time ago and if I remember right, it didn't work last time, so it landed in my to-do box for a while. As I said, from time to time I have to go through a lot of various PCI cards, video cards, sound, network, capture cards, you name it. As you can imagine, it can take a lot of time going through all that, inserting, installing drivers, rebooting, testing, removing drivers again, preparing the system for the next cards, where sometimes the drivers cannot be removed in a clean way, leaving you with a broken operation system. I think you know what I mean. It is a huge pain in the back, and using an all-time correct setup with Windows XP, for example, would mean that I wouldn't have time to maintain this channel, so I use something different for such a test rush. Here I have an SSD, which I will come back to in a minute, but first of all, for testing of PCI and PCI Express cards, I use this main board with a 64-bit AMD Athlon and 4GB RAM. As you see, this board still has an IDE connector, in case I want to test a hard drive or other IDE drive. The CPU, as I said, is an AMD Athlon something, don't remember. It also has a PCI Express and two PCI slots, which we will use today to test the Sound Blaster card. This board has an integrated GPU, so we don't need an additional graphics card. Just connect the power supply and the keyboard, insert the sound card and we are ready to go. Well, almost. Of course, we will need an operation system, and here is where the SSD comes into play. As you see, this board also has SATA ports and supports SATA 2 and I think even SATA 3. Anyway, on this drive I have the latest Linux installed, which works out of the box with quite a lot of hardware. And here is the benefit. Linux has thousands of drivers already integrated. It may lack drivers for the latest and greatest hardware, but for the older hardware it works very well. It auto-detects the hardware on boot and automatically activates the required drivers. No need to install or uninstall anything, reboot and so on. Just plug in the card which you want to test and turn on the power. Also, there is no risk to corrupt the operation system like we would do with Windows XP by messing around with different drivers. And in the worst case, even if a driver couldn't be loaded, 
It is very easy to check if the hardware shows some kind of life due to vast amount of tools and low level logging. This SSD which I have is prepared for BIOS and EFI systems, so it would boot on nearly any system, it just needs a 64-bit CPU, hence my choice of the main board for such a test. Once the system has booted, first thing I do is listing the detected hardware. LSPCI command shows all PCI devices and as you see there are quite a lot. I'm searching for the sound card, so with grep we can filter only the audio devices. As you see we have the onboard audio only and HDMI audio device. The Sound Blaster Live hasn't been detected at all. I know that this card should work flawlessly here, that's why this is most probably a hardware issue. The components on the cards are warm, so at least it gets the power. Let's take a closer look at the card. Oh, I just found that the plastic around the line in port is broken. On such cards, the main chip is actually directly connected to the underlying bus, PCI in this case, so if the card will be not detected at all, it is either a power issue or the connection to the chip is interrupted somewhere, or the chip itself is dead. We know that the chip gets warm, so the power is probably not the issue. Of course, the pins around the chip could have lost the connection. This can be analyzed under the microscope. But first, let's look through the traces which are going from the PCI bus to the chip. On the back, I don't see any scratches in this area. On the front, as you see, most of the pins of the EMU10K1 chip are connected directly to the PCI port. And also here, I don't see any scratches. The pins don't seem to be bent too. Here we have some capacitors which could be shorted. Oh, and I see the problem. Or at least one problem. Here one resistor is missing. Looks like it has been ripped off. And as you see, the trace which it connects uh, goes from the PCI port directly into the chip. This is what we are searching for. Now we need to know which resistor value is required here. Luckily I already have an equal card in my collection, which is absolutely working. So let's uh, see which resistor it has. 33 ohm. Cool. Time to take out the microscope. I will use this ATI 3D Rage Pro graphics card, which was crippled by Metal Hunters, which cut off the golden plated AGP edge connector. It seems to have a couple of 33 ohm resistors which we need. Now let's clean the old pads a bit and solder the new resistor. Oh boy, what a crooked work, but it should do the job. Let's give it another try. And here we go, the Creative Labs EMU10K1 Sound Blaster Live series has been detected. If that was it, we now should be able to enjoy some music.
would say this was a success. Unfortunately, I couldn't find appropriate light in audio port in my scrap, so I glued the plastic around it off camera. The port itself works, its plastic housing is just broken. Glue seems to hold it in place, but I will have to order a replacement later. And this is it. This way, using a slightly modern setup with Linux, I can go through a lot of hardware very easy and fast, repair it or at least make some notes what's wrong. In the worst case, put the hardware then into the scrap box for parts. As I said, with a time-correct Windows XP system, it would take much longer to get things done. And I wanted to share this approach with you because I plan to make a video where I want to build a dedicated universal test machine for such tasks. I already got a very interesting mainboard for that, so stay tuned for updates. So far, as always, thank you for watching and goodbye.